So this is going to be a tutorial on how to do the simulation uh, for taking random samples of tadpoles and measuring their lengths and then analyzing uh, your sample uh, for the average value and uh, the average variation that you see within the sample, something called standard deviation. And so uh, I just thought it'd be interesting to put a picture of a native frog we have here in our area where your college is located. This is called the Rio Grande leopard frog. Its scientific name is Lithobates berlandieri. Uh, and as we, we all study early, early grades, the frogs go through a life cycle, it gets fertilized, uh, then the larval stage of the tadpole. They go through metamorphosis, which means to change. Uh, and they change into uh, sub-adults, to juveniles, and then they go through uh, a growth stage, and then eventually they come to maturity. And for ectotherms, which are misnamed uh, cold-blooded animals, but for these, uh, their growth is usually indeterminate. Uh, they're not like mammals that have a definite uh, growth uh, um, where they stop growing, but usually they slow down in growth when they start to reproduce. But in that case, it becomes a little bit harder to figure out what the age of these uh, frogs are uh, overall. So uh, sometimes uh, more important information is not necessarily what is the overall age structure of that population, but what is the size structure of that. But uh, in this case, we're not going to be looking at uh, adult frogs or sub-adults. We're going to be looking at tadpoles. So you can see on the next two slides, we have pictures of tadpoles of the ruler there. Uh, and then on the next one. And so there's actually two groups of tadpoles. They were either treated through an experiment uh, differently or we got them from two different locations and it's more of a natural experiment that we'll be studying. But the things you're going to be needing for this lab. So that PowerPoint you're going to need and you can download it and then you're going to open it up to do the simulation. Uh, this is your week one um, assignment document for your first assignments lecture in your laboratory. And by now, you've already gone through Here's your supplemental uh, items, but here are your tasks. You've already gone through lab safety. Uh, you've done the metric system, uh, unit conversions, and now you've come to, uh, you've done your simulations through Connect, and then you've cut, you're on step 10 right now. And that first, that PowerPoint I was showing you, you can download it right here. It's the two samples of tadpoles. You download it, you can save it to your computer. Um, you might not have to, you might be able to run the simulation just open there uh, on the tab there. But there's a feature here that allows you to um, download as, so you can download the copy, or you can probably save it to your own OneDrive. And once you do that, then you'll be able to manipulate as needed, save it, make changes you want to it. But you don't have to make any changes, you just have to move the, ru uh, the ruler around here. The other thing you're going to need is this Excel spreadsheet that I've created that's going to help you generate a random sample from what you see on those PowerPoints um, uh, on the slides. Then you're going to need the raw data table, and this will be for your samples. There's actually 30 tadpoles on each slide, one for group A and one for group B, but you're not going to measure them all. Uh, that would be uh, a bit too time consuming for this simulation. 30 is actually a magic number in statistics, but uh, you're going to get a random sample. I'm going to suggest seven, so I've created a table that has seven there. Now you can type them in there, or you can write your data in your notebook that you're keeping, uh, but you're not going to turn this one in. You're going to turn in this next one that's going to involve calculations, and this next one is going to be for the next tutorial video that follows this one. So that data you collect, you're going to need to put into this table, and I'll show you uh, that in the next tutorial, but you're going to need this, this one here. And there's a table here for running the calculations for the group A tadpoles and one for the group B tadpoles. And you are going to need to turn this in, and this is something you're going to have to do with lots of data sets in your labs this semester. So it's something we want to make sure we establish that foundation for analyzing data later. So make sure you have these. Now, the idea here is we don't want to go here to... Um, uh, to each of these, uh, you can see this ruler here that's going to simulate you know, a ruler to go and measure the lengths uh, up there. The idea is you don't want to just go in there and pick any tadpoles because either on purpose or just by some 
uh, bias that is uh, subconscious, you go and pick all the largest ones or the smallest ones. And so in order to avoid that, scientists want to make sure we pick a random sample. So that's where the spreadsheet comes in. So you can see we have uh, the tadpole here. And I actually have one ruler on each one, but it's important to know that when you're making multiple measurements, you always want to use the same instrument to avoid another kind of error bias that can occur from one instrument to another. Uh, but uh, just, let's assume that this is the same ruler on both ones, or you can uh, take the ruler on one and control X and then paste it on the next slide if you want. Uh, Oops, I wouldn't do that. You can see it just uh, change the size of the router. So never mind on that one. Just use the routers on both. They're, they were made copies, exact copies of themselves. But in real life, you use the same instrument to make more, uh, you're going to be doing repeat measurements on a population, for example. Uh, and then, uh, so that's what you're going to do. And so when it comes to the random, you're going to want to have a, a notebook handy or something to write these quick notes on. I'm just going to get an index card. And what you're going to do is you're going to write down the individuals that you're going to take measurements for. And you can see I have uh, the second column here is individuals, uh, tadpoles, 1 through um, 30. And then in the first column, I have a random number. Uh, so Excel, and each cell is generating a random number. Uh, it's a random decimal number. And uh, this is really nice because we don't have to use tables of random numbers like we, we had to um, before these computers were everywhere. And so you're going to uh, basically click on one of the cells and then go and highlight all the cells that you're going to sort. So you need to sort both columns and you can sort the top two uh, column headings. And you're going to come to the, the place where it says data there, the, the data tab, and under that menu. And here you have your custom sort. You can actually use uh, this one here because it'll sort based on the first column. Let me just show you custom cord if you, uh, sort if you're going to sort uh, more columns. You don't want to sort the yellow column, so you're just highlighting uh, the random number column and the individual column there. And here we have it clicked for that there are column headings. This way we know we're not going to sort those top two boxes there. And because we have column headings, there's a random number and there's the individual tadpole column. We want to sort based on the random number, so it's going to sort the second column along with the random number. It's going to sort based on that random number. So this is what's going to give us a random sample. And when we do that, the first seven numbers are going to be copied here in the yellow column, and those would be the numbers for the individuals that you're going to get measurements from. And so this is just simulating an actual random sample. Now, if we were sampling from the wild, we would need to know a little something about the natural history of the leopard frog or whatever it is you're studying so that that knowledge helps make sure that you are actually taking a random sample from uh, these uh, this animal out in the wild. Uh, and so... Uh, but but we're not doing that. This is just a simulation. So this is just a way to simulate getting a random sample. And so when I click on that, you can see it sorted it. And you can do this a hundred times, and you're going to have probably a hundred different individ, uh, set of individuals. Now, you may get the, some of the same individuals over again, but you're not going to have the same seven of them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the ones that I'm going to sample. So you can see I'm going to do individual number one, 17, um, and so on down that list, the yellow box, uh, 28 and 21 there at the end. So I've written them down, and you can use these same numbers for both group A and B because they were placed on there individually, or you might run the simulation again, which is probably a good idea, and it'll give you a different set, and that would be the individuals that you do for the second group. Okay. It's important to note that when you do this, no other class, no other individual that's in this class this semester is going to have the exact same individual tadpoles. So no one is going to have the same uh, average calculation. No one's going to have the same mean or standard deviation, which you have to do turn in for a grade. So keep that in mind. Everybody's uh, data uh, sets should be uh, different, uh, and they're going to be, they're all going to be different. It's possible to get the exact same one, but probably the odds of doing that are like the uh, same as getting struck by lightning. Uh, so. Uh, it would be a very, very rare case. So I've written those down. And so let's say now I'm going to go and I have the, the data table ready. So here's my data table here. And I'm going to collect from uh, from group A and then I'm going to write for group B. And I'm just going to show you how you would do this for the first few. And you want to make sure you, you uh, 
do your measurements. So according to my first simulation for group A, I was going to sample number 1, 17, 29, and then so on. I'm just going to do the, the first two for you. And so you're going to take the ruler and you're going to move in. And one of the first ones I'm going to sample is number one. So I'm going to move this ruler here. I'm going to use the metric side. And it's important to note that this ruler actually has a little gap there on the very edge. And the zero mark is uh, right there where I put it on the edge of the slide. Okay. Now... It looks like it's pretty much zoomed to fit. Um, so you could zoom in uh, if you want. It's much easier to zoom in uh, if you're on the power, uh, actual desktop version of PowerPoint. And so you can zoom in and zoom everything in and you can get a better look. But what you're going to do is basically I'm going to get this first one here. Because mine said you want to line up the edge right on the snout of the tadpole there, right on the uh, on the front end of it, and then you want to move that ruler into place where uh, it's right at the edge there, and you can actually use the arrows to help refine where the ruler is. And right there, I can see that where the nose is is zero on the line, and each line is a millimeter, so it's we're already at 25, 26, so it looks like it's at about 27 uh, millimeters. So now I'm going to go to the table, and for that one, I'm going to write down 27. I don't have to write millimeters because it's on the top of the table already. Okay. The next one you're going to measure, or that I would measure, because that's the what the random selection was from the generator, is 17. So I would go to 17 and then line that one up. Now, if you're on the desktop version of X, of uh, PowerPoint, it's important to note that you cannot move the ruler if you're playing the slideshow, right? You can only do it when you're not playing the slideshow. Uh, and it's important to note that uh, that, that point uh, is true there and that you are actually going to be doing uh, some random seven of these. So it's not going to be the same ones I'm doing. So I'm gonna make sure you do this for yourself and get your own data set. And so this one, it looks like it's going to be... Uh, I might need to zoom in on this, but it looks like it's 27 as well. Sometimes you're going to get repeats. The next one I'm supposed to sample is 29, so I'm going to come down here to 29. And this one looks a little bit bigger. And 29, just by coincidence, looks like it's about 29 millimeters. Okay. And so you're recording your data. Uh, and then uh, you can go to some of the other ones. Some of them look like they're going through metamorphosis. I did that on purpose. Uh, put some pictures of those with already growing legs. This one looks like it's more close to 34, 35. So you want to be careful. If you download it to your desktop, you can really zoom in and see it more closely. So you're going to do this for group A. And then when you're done, you're doing those seven random ones. Then you're going to go to group B, and you're going to do the seven random ones from group B. And now you have the data that would be put that's in these in this table for group A and group B. From there, uh, once you're done with that, then you're going to move on to the next video for the, the calculation of the mean and standard deviation. So make sure you use this spreadsheet to get your random samples, and that's how you do this part of the lab simulation. So let me know if you have any questions, uh, but make sure you get this done, and then move on to the next video so that you can do the means and the standard deviations.